Duck surveyed the damage. Hello, Oliver. Are you being a good, gracious engine? Beg pardon, but we really don't like this sort of surprise. safe to say that recently I've been on a little western kick. After modeling my scrap toad and rewatching Escape, and consequently drawing up plans for a scrap Oliver, I don't even own a fucking Bachman Oliver I never have. I'm gonna be buying the boy to break him. And after watching some episodes for inspiration, as I've considered actually modeling the little western recently, I just haven't got around to doing it. One episode stuck out to me in particular, and it's one that did when I was a kid as well. And that episode is Oliver Owns Up. I would argue that this episode probably poses the best visuals for the Arlesboro branch line that we ever got. The entire set itself is just fucking amazing, but Duck and Oliver basically get an episode to themselves. We even got to see Donald even though Douglas was nowhere to be found in this episode for some reason. So right off the bat you have an elite cast, but combine that with a beautiful set, and it's an adaption of the Railway series, so yeah this story's a special one. But it's not just these three points that make this episode special. As I'm sure you guessed by the title of this video, there's actually a true story behind the events of Oliver Owns Up. When Oliver falls into the turntable in this episode, it by no means feels out of the realm of possibility. And that's because being an RWS book and written by the Reverend W. Audrey, it actually comes from reality. Of course, as I always am, I was interested by what I was able to find. And thank you to everybody who recommended me to check this one out as well. I really wasn't expecting a lot going into it, but boy oh boy was I wrong. With all that being said, let's finally jump into the true story of Oliver Onza. Which one of you drunk motherfuckers? Jokes aside though, the image we're looking at is called Off the Road at Backup Shed, taken from SteamWorld issue 229. A very clear misjudgment had left the locomotive at a dramatic angle after plunging into the turntable pit. Though it's hard to see, the text on the image is as follows. Close examination of this picture shows recovery underway. To the right is a breakdown train, while behind a man is moving timber bulks into the pit. Presumably the rear of the locomotive will be raised by jacks, allowing it to be pulled free. The angle of the locomotive suggests that it was traveling at a relatively low speed when it fell into the pit. It really it really is funny because from this angle, this locomotive really does kind of look like Oliver, especially when you put it beside the RWS pictures. What's also notable is if you look at the RWS pictures, you'll see Donald and Douglas right here. Now here's the same event but from a different angle. Even the recovery engine looks like Donald or Douglas, although all we know for sure about the engines is that one is a 242 and one is an 060. The text on this image is as follows. Neither the date of the accident or details of the locomotive involved are recorded on these pictures, submitted by Stefan Spencer, who says the prints were given to me many years ago by Colin Cook. We worked together as ambulance men. Mr. Cook's father, David Cook, was a fireman at Backup Shed and could have taken these pictures. In LMS days, an LNY 242T has fallen into the turntable pit at Backup. The locomotive is fully cold, and it might have been left slightly in gear and run away, or the accident could have been the result of misjudgment by the crew. The locomotive's number, though partially obscured, is a part of the 107XX series, that of which Backup had had four, at various times between 1935 and 1939. However, it could be from another shed, such as Bury, which has the same number in the same series, making our lives that much more complicated. The bottom image shows an 060 coupled to a breakdown train, which is shielding the view from the passenger trains on the right. Yes, literally, apparently they tried to use this engine to cover up the fuck up that they made with this engine. Little did they know they'd still make it into my YouTube video one day, and go on to inspire one of the most iconic episodes in Thomas and Friends. The Little Western will always be a favorite of mine. From the characters to the location itself, there's so much to appreciate when you take into account everything that the Arlesboro line has to offer. And it's no coincidence that I felt the same way as a kid. One of the big things about the Little Western is that it's different. Not only does it have a great roster of characters, but visually it's so different from everywhere else on the island of Sodor. And it's so interesting, at least to me, to see what the Reverend W would take to create this. It's not like the accident that takes place in the episode is crazy by any means, but nonetheless it was something that I could actually see happening and presented a realm of reality to the Thomas and friend's world. That truly becomes deepened when you find out that it actually really did happen. And seeing the RWS picture side by side to the actual event, not only is it kind of funny, but honestly kind of inspirational. To think that this and this, just basic railway fuck-ups you would think, inspired one of my favorite episodes of all time. It feels especially better to bask in it now, given the fact that they recently confirmed that Oliver would be in the reboot, and his model is fucking terrible. Let me show you guys. <laughs> Jokes aside though, hopefully you guys did enjoy, and thank you again to everybody who commented on the last video suggesting that I check this episode out. Not only did I get to bask in a little bit of my childhood again, but now have newfound inspiration and knowledge that I can use to appreciate Thomas and Friends even more. Thank you guys for watching.